thing that we first encounter uh, is the midline nasal septum. And this has multiple components that are both um, bony, like the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid, which uh, you can see grows down here, um, or the vomer, uh, which is uh, from the palate. And then the cartilaginous portion, which is kind of in the front, um, and the anterior portion of the nose, are the quadrangular cartilage. And actually, the majority of the bony septum can actually be removed, um, as well as the cartilaginous septum, as long as you maintain an L-shaped strut anteriorly. And that's really what's uh, kind of critical for the external nasal appearance of the nose, is this anterior um, anterior portion, anterior and dorsal portion of the nose depicted here in blue. Now, what we'd like to encounter is uh, this normal endoscopic anatomy. Mike, if you could pull up that um, video, please. And I will have that video up for you just momentarily. So what we'll show here is uh, both a zero and then subsequently a 30-degree endoscope. Um, and the slightly different views you have of, the, um, of a normal nose as you first enter into this. So uh, here we are. And um, so as we enter, and this is the left nasal cavity, you see the nasal septum off to the left, and then the ter inferior turbinate off to the right. And here we are approaching the nasopharynx through the coena, and there's the URU station tube off to the right side. Here we look up into the middle turbinate, and then the space where we're very concerned for the paranasal sinuses, but actually we don't access as frequently for uh, endoscopic and nasal surgery. It's actually this cavity right here uh, that leads us to the sphenoid sinus, and there you see the ostium, or the opening of the sphenoid sinus. Now we're going to convert this to a 30-degree endoscope looking upwards, and you can see that you really don't see the floor of the nose very well anymore, but you still can appreciate your septum off to the side and the inferior turbinate. And looking up here, it's quite easy to see the sphenoethmoidal recess with the uh, natural ostium of the sphenoid sinus and then the lateral turbinate structures. And so as you can see, there are essentially three turbinates, the inferior, the middle, and then the superior, which we saw um, last. So the reason the superior turbinate is important is if you identify the superior turbinate, which is actually right here um, on this right side, um, let me get an arrow here, which is – try that one more time. Um, okay. Well, it is uh, this structure kind of in the center of the view here. Um, this uh, represents our superior turbinate. And the importance of identifying your superior turbinate is that this allows you to identify your sphenoid ostium. Uh, the, sphenoid, uh, the opening to the sphenoid sinus is uh, always medial to the superior turbinate structure and um, allows you and um, is approximately at the mid portion uh, of the superior turbinate. So for reference, here you can see the uh, entrance into the nasopharynx or the coena and then uh, inferiorly, and then superiorly, you identify the superior turbinate and the natural sphenoid ostium. So when we enter into the sphenoid sinus, this, as we mentioned, there can be, uh, while this is the center of our skull-based universe, there actually can be a variation in the amount of uh, pneumonization that occurs in the sphenoid sinus. Thankfully, the most common is the cellar pattern of pneumonization, where there's a well-defined clival recess. You see that on the inferior portion of the, um, of the slide here. But um, there can additionally be a pre-cellar uh, pneumonization, which you see in the upper right-hand corner, which ha occurs in approximately one quarter of the time. And this is where the cella um, is defi definable, but there's not um, a clival recess. And then fortunately, only 5% of the time you'll have this contra pattern, which is depicted up in the upper left, uh, which um, ablates some of the normal uh, anatomic landmarks. Now, while this is not a contraindication to endoscopic and nasal um, transcellular surgery, it does make the identification of the key neurovascular structures much more difficult. So um, one of the important relationships to understand, here's a left-sided specimen, um, is this is this relationship between the natural sphenoid ostium here and the, uh, 
the quena or the quenal arch down here. This is on the left side again. These two vascular and vascular uh, structures are your posterior septal branch of your sphenopalatine artery. We'll talk about this more, but these are critical um, towards the uh, towards. Um, the nasal septal flap, which is our primary reconstructive tool for many of our endoscopic skull base cases. So, um, we'll skip through this. so um, to allow us to have binarial access or to use both nostrils and to increase the freedom of motion of our instruments, we most frequently perform a posterior posterior septectomy, and this is essentially inconsequential because this. As long as we maintain this anterior strut here, this small posterior window um, really has no functional consequence uh, for the patient, but it allows us a, a tremendously increased uh, freedom of motion and mobility. So essentially for every uh, endoscopic and a nasal skull base case, um, uh, in the cella, we perform a posterior septectomy. Now, it's critical that you not place this too high because the uh, patient's sense of smell and olfaction actually is principally in this uh, one centimeter of mucosa uh, right along the cribriform plate. Um, and then, of course, you don't want to take it too inferiorly as, as it may inhibit uh, your reconstructive choices. So here's an example of a bilateral sphenoidotomy um, with a with a large phenoid rostrum here um, where a nasal septal flap has been elevated on this uh, right side. And you can see here that this uh, classic rostrum or keel, um, it separates the two sides of the sphenoid. And, um, and removal of this really allows us to have um, um, our binarial access, which allows us to access all of our landmarks. Um, so here is a video of a bilateral sphenoidotomy approach. You can see here we're entering the a natural sphenoid osteum uh, with the mucosa separated from this. And using Keras arrangeurs, you can actually quite quickly and efficiently remove this entire keel. And even when there's a dominant sphenoid on the right side and a small sphenoid on the left, you can see the increased working motion, uh, working freedom that the instruments allow when you remove uh, this uh, sphenoid keel. So um, this is an incredibly well pneumatized specimen, which really demonstrates the important landmarks within the sphenoid sinus that we all come to identify and uh, become uh, the keys to our safe endoscopic and nasal surgery. So in the middle of the screen right here is the sphenoid keel. The sphenoidotomies have expanded inferiorly on both sides. And clearly we can start to see our landmarks um, at the skull base uh, quite well. As we work posteriorly, um, again, the keel is removed. I point out to you that these inner sinus septations, which are depicted here, very rarely um, truly go to the midline. In the majority of the cases, they actually go laterally uh, towards an internal carotid artery. Uh, you can see one on each side. And so that's why when, when you remove these uh, structures, it's important to do them either with a drill or through cutting instruments and not torquing out um, these inner sinus septations as you may have an inadvertent injury to your ICA. So once those inner sinus septations are removed, now you can clearly start to see um, the important landmarks that we wish we could identify in every case. So here, obviously, is your cella and the tuberculum, this uh, wedge of bone uh, just superior to that. Here's your clival recess. And as we look laterally, we identify the important neurovascular structures. So here is the sphenoid planum and the optic nerve on each side. It's wonderful when we can identify a lateral optical carotid recess that is this well pneumatized. This is pneumatization of the optic strut that occurs between um, the optic nerve above and the paraclinoidal segment of the internal carotid artery. And then as we work here, this is our area of our cavernous sinus, and which will include our uh, cavernous carotid. And then this um, proceeds here to our um, paraclival carotid artery. Okay. So the sphenoid sinus can have some um, uh, normal anatomic variants, um, the most common of which is uh, termed an anode cell. This is actually just an ethmoid sinus that has grown over the sphenoid sinus. You can see on this endoscopic picture on the right side, the true sphenoid sinus actually lies inferiorly here, and the uh, anode cell lies above here. It's important to recognize this on your coronal CT um, to allow for adequate visualization of all those key structures. 
Additionally, it's um, excuse me. Additionally, it's important to identify these anode cells, as um, there are times when the optic um, the optic nerve um, can have a dehiscence of its bony canal, and this is more frequently found uh, when this anode cell is present. So um, identification of this on your preoperative imaging is critical. Additionally, there are important sphenoid landmarks which are not so clearly visualized um, on our initial nasal endoscopy. And uh, in this kind of classic CT picture here, you see uh, foramen rotundum or V2, and then the, uh, vi uh, the pterygoid canal or the vidian artery. Uh, here is an axial uh, scan of this showing, again, uh, this vidian uh, canal as it runs towards um, your um, foramen lacerum segment of your internal carotid artery. So when you have a lateral recess of your sphenoid um, is when the sphenoid expands um, out into the pterygoid wedge itself. You can see here is the pterygoid body. And this pneumonization that occurs actually splays apart V2 and the vidian canal and creates this space. Um, this is most clinically important in uh, spontaneous CSF leaks. As this is a common site in this area. But also this degree of pneumonization actually many times can help, um, help you identify your landmarks within your sphenoid as well.